So July is the start of the medical academic year. And every July at teaching hospitals across the country, new residents and new fellows start their training or they're promoted to more independent roles in patient care. And there's been some concern over this transition in that does it uh, result in more errors that could compromise patient care. And this phenomenon is what's known as July effect. So studies are inconclusive in terms of whether or not a July effect actually exists. So some studies do show that patients who are admitted in July can have worse outcomes compared to patients admitted in other months. But other studies have shown there's really no difference and it doesn't matter when you're admitted to hospitals. So the debate's still up in the air. We wanted to specifically look at whether or not there was a July effect in patients who were coming in for spinal surgery. And so we used a very large database known as the Nationwide Inpatient Sample. And this is the largest publicly available all-payer inpatient database in the United States. It contains detailed information on approximately 20% of all hospitalizations each year. And so we were able to use this very comprehensive database in order to look at patients when they're admitted and whether they're admitted to teaching or non-teaching hospitals to look for evidence of a July effect. We started with uh, an eight-year time period between 2001 and 2008, and we wanted to identify all patients who were hospitalized for spinal surgery. So these are patients coming in for spinal decompression, discectomy, laminectomy, or spinal fusion. And we ended up with just under one million patients treated at over 1,700 hospitals across the country. So it was a very comprehensive study looking at really a nationwide picture of medical care. So we compared patients who were admitted in July as compared to patients who were admitted in other months. And we looked at particular patient outcomes. So we looked at whether or not patients died while they were hospitalized, whether or not they were discharged to long-term care, which suggests a worse clinical picture as compared to patients who are discharged to home. And we also looked at complications that can occur after surgery, such as infection or reopening of the surgical wound. What we found is that when we compared these patients, patients who were admitted in July did not have a substantially higher risk of any of these mortality or morbidity outcomes as compared to patients who were admitted in other months. I feel very confident in this particular cohort looking at patients with spinal surgery that we really don't see evidence of a July effect. That doesn't mean that July effect doesn't exist at all or that it may not exist in other patients presenting for other treatments or patients who are healthier or sicker, say. And one of the things we were able to do is because our cohort is so incredibly large is that we were able to drill down and look at specific patient subgroups. So for example, we looked at patients who were electively admitted. And these typically are patients who are healthier and are less likely to have complications. And we didn't see a July effect in those patients. But conversely, we also looked at patients who had an elevated Charlson comorbidity score. And this is essentially a score that tallies all the comorbidities that a patient has. So the higher the score, the sicker the patient is and more likely to have complications. But again, we didn't see a July effect in these patients either. And it also didn't depend on the type of spinal surgery. So we looked at simple spinal surgeries, such as a discectomy with or without a spinal decompression. And we also looked at more complex spinal surgeries, such as spinal fusion. And again, we saw no evidence of a July effect in either of it. So our findings are really consistent, regardless of how healthy or sick the patient is, and regardless of what particular type of spinal surgery they get.